Gravity. No one knows why it exists. It is responsible for just about everything that happens in this universe, yet we truly have no clue why. We just aren't that smart yet. However, we do know that it exists, and we know that any two masses are attracted to each other by a gravitational force. This was first published by Sir Isaac Newton, who went even further to find that these forces of attraction were directly proportional to the masses of the objects and inversely proportional to the distance between the two objects. That is, the larger the masses, the larger the gravitational force, and the larger the radius, the smaller the gravitational force. He developed the universal gravitation equation F equals G M1 M2 divided by R squared in 1687. No one knew yet what the constant G was, it was just thought of as a constant. I wanted to know what it is, so I turned to our AP system. All I got was a number, 6.674 times 10 to the negative 11th Newton times meters squared divided by kilograms squared. That literally tells me nothing. I want to know why is this number that number, so I must dig deeper, which means I must go back in time again. After Newton came along Henry Cavendish, a British natural philosopher, chemist, and physicist. This guy was super smart. In 1798, he wanted to calculate the density of the Earth, so he set up the famous Cavendish experiment. He made use of a balance developed by the geologist John Mitchell to measure the force of attraction between two sets of balls. Here is how it worked. Cavendish had two 1.6 pound lead balls attached to either end of a wooden rod suspended from a wire. He also had two 348 pound balls fixed equal distances from the wire. He even covered his experiment in a thick wooden box with two holes for observation to prevent interference from air currents. So, in Cavendish's experiment, friction has been almost entirely removed. Now, the small balls are free to move towards the larger ones, causing the rod to turn and twist the wire. Knowing the torque, or twisting force, of the wire, the distance and time the bar rotated, and the weights of the balls, Cavendish was able to make his calculations. Ironically, he found the density and mass of the Earth, but never recorded G. The value was not actually documented until 1874. As it turns out, F equals G M1 M2 over R squared can be rewritten as G equals 2 pi squared L theta R squared divided by T squared M. This is accomplished through substituting kappa theta over L for F, where K, or kappa, is the torsion coefficient of the string and theta is the angle the bar turns from the rest position to the equilibrium point, measured in radians. K can then be replaced by 2 pi squared m L squared theta divided by T squared, where L is the total length of the bar in meters. With some rearranging, the equation becomes G equals 2 pi squared L theta R squared divided by T squared M. G is the gravitational constant in Newton meters squared divided by kilograms squared. L is the total length of the rod in meters. Theta is the angle in radians the rod rotates while oscillating, which will be explained in a moment. R is the distance in meters between the equilibrium point and the center of the fixed mass. T is the period of oscillation in seconds, and M is the value of the larger mass. The main goal is to get the force of torque from my fishing line to match the force of attraction between the masses, so that the rod can oscillate around an equilibrium point. It oscillates because the momentum of the ball moves it past the point where these two forces are equal before it is pulled back by one of the forces, either the force of torque or the force of gravity. When it reaches the equilibrium point again, it still has momentum and so moves past, and this process continues forever and forever. Obtaining this oscillation was much harder than one might think. It was also crucial not to disturb the system with any air currents or vibrations, which meant me leaving my camera on time-lapse mode and coming in and out of my room only to stop the camera or readjust the bowling balls. Finally, I was able to get it to oscillate around the point after many, many tests. It goes up, and it goes back. Eventually, I was able to get this angle of 3 degrees, or 0 0.0523599 radians, a radius of 0.17526 meters, and a period of 31 minutes, or 1,860 seconds. When plugged into the equation, I get a value of 9.018 times 10 to the negative 10th. Woohoo! Wait, why am I celebrating? Because considering the value of g is so incredibly small, and there were large uncontrollable variables in my experiment, such as air currents or the frame rate of my time lapse, which would cause error, it is in the very close ballpark of g. Here are the two numbers written out for a more clear comparison of their difference. Science on a budget does not always get you the right decimal. Hopefully, even though this video got no one any closer to understanding the source of gravity, it helped you understand that gravitational constant.